Hello everybody, this is Ea Susanna Akasha from the Reference Centre for Psychosocial Support. Today in this podcast we're going to talk about fear and guilt in the time of COVID-19. And I have asked Mel Powell from um, the PS Centre and also from the Icelandic Red Cross if she would share some of her um, ideas and suggestions on how to address the subject. So Mel, would you like to present yourself please? Well, thanks, Ia. So I um, work as a clinical psychologist and also have a background in international relations. So I both see clients and do technical work in psychosocial support and mental health. Right, that's very interesting. And you've been with the Red Cross for how long? Uh, paid just for one year <laughs> and volunteer for some years before that. <laughs> right. So we're going to talk about fear and guilt and these two um, emotions come up quite a lot when we discuss what is happening to people during um, the the pandemic so could you tell me a bit about the feelings of feel, fear and guilt and what is it that makes so many people experience these feelings during this particular pandemic oh that's a really good question Ia. i think um, fear and guilt are probably two of the most common reactions that people have when something unexpected or something threatening happens. And COVID is both of those things because there's still a lot of unknowns um, with COVID and things are changing. And also COVID can be something that's quite serious and life-threatening for people in all of the different um, age groups and vulnerabilities. So these two emotions of fear and guilt um, are very natural. And they're actually emotions that protect us from things that are dangerous. So if we're feeling fear, then we tend not to approach things that are fearful. So if we think of COVID, then the, the feeling of fear um, helps us do those protective behaviours, like to wash our hands or socially distance. And likewise, the feeling of guilt is very helpful as well with the COVID pandemic, because guilt is um, a negative emotion that we really want to avoid. So as humans, we're taking lots of behaviours to try and not have those negative feelings. So we're you know, in a rush somewhere and we don't really feel like we have time to spread our hands, but then we get this feeling of guilt. What happens if I don't put sanitizer on my hands? Am I going to infect my loved ones? And so this feeling of guilt can help us make positive choices as well. Well, these are very good. This is a very good spin to have on it. That's quite interesting. I notice that whenever I forget to wash my hands when coming home, I also have this feeling, oh my God, <gasps> something I should have done, ought to have done, and then I do it. So that's quite interesting. So um, how can we address the, the level of fear? I, I say the level of fear so it doesn't become like absolutely um, an anxiety that's all pervasive. So what can we do during COVID-19, more generally speaking? Okay, yeah, you're right, Ia. So fear um, is helpful, but not if there's too much, not if we're always thinking about the negative consequences. So some of the things that we can do, probably the most helpful one is to get accurate information about COVID-19. So once we have accurate information, then we know what we need to be afraid of and what we don't need to be afraid of. And when we're collecting this information, um, there's a few really good reputable places that we can find it from. For example, the World Health Organization is an international source. And also most governments now are starting to put together websites specifically about COVID in your home country with all the regulations for your country and what to do. So we can minimise our fear and get it down to a healthy level by making sure we have the right information about what we should be afraid about and what we should do to protect ourselves. So, um, first of all, it's um, having the right and accurate information. And, and what can we do ourselves? How can we help ourselves not being too caught up in being fearful and, and then ending up not being able to sleep at night because we're worrying, for instance? Mm -hmm. So once we get that information, it's good to just check it once a day. Any more than this is excessive and it can make us feel more fearful by checking all of the information all of the time. And then we can take steps to act on that information, um, just reminding ourselves to do the things that we need to do and trying to put these things into perspective as well. 
So by reminding, you mean you mentally tell yourself, well, actually, it's not that dangerous. And if I follow these regulations, then there's no need to be so fearful. Talking to yourself can be one way of not getting caught up in the fear. That's exactly right. Using this um, positive self-talk with using the information that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, COVID-19 is dangerous. Um, it can be dangerous. People have lost their lives, quite a number of people. So we don't want to say this is something that's not dangerous, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't be making the measures about. But at the same time, we don't need to be um, completely locking ourselves away. Good point. Um, and and how would you how would you go about if um, somebody consults you? You're sitting in the hotline from the Icelandic Red Cross, or you're having somebody call in when you're giving consultations. I know you do that for the Icelandic Red Cross, and they have exaggerated levels of fear. How would you talk to them? Um, there's quite a few techniques that you can use. So one that I like to um, kind of use is to talk to people about what's under their control and what's not under their control. So, for example, um, there's many things that are under our control with COVID because we can take personal protective measures and encourage those in our circle of friends and, and workplaces to take those measures as well. So I encourage people to focus on the things that we can control and can have influence over. Then there's a lot of other things that we can't influence. Maybe what other countries are opting to do in terms of their politics or approaches or what's happening globally. And spending a lot of energy on that is not particularly helpful. So you talk to people about what they are fearful about, which is actually outside of their circle of control. Yeah. That's what you can do. Yeah, mm, that's good right. good advice. Yeah. Do you have other do you have other ideas or suggestions that when you talk to people that you help them sort of manage get their fear down to a more manageable level? Yeah, well also anxiety can come in a lot when people are very fearful. So using some of the general um, anxiety mm -hmm. reducing techniques yeah. like um, calm breathing, um, mindfulness. Uh, some, of, some of these things that can also help people get more back into a state of calm and feel like they're more in control. Yeah, yeah. so they're not always thinking and um, imagining what's going to happen, but they're more in the here and now. Is that what you also do? Yeah, trying to get people just in the here and now and focus on what they can control. Right, okay. There's, um, it's very interesting, you know, you may know of all these studies about how contagious kindness is. There's a famous study about somebody paying a cup of coffee in a coffee shop and then the next customer will pay for the next customer and it actually goes on to more than 50 people. Mm -hmm. So from studies and from experiments such as that, we know that kindness is very contagious. Mm. But what about fear? Can, can fear also spread? Oh, that's such a good analogy and such a good question, Ia, because fear does spread in the same way that kindness does. Um, and so... Uh, it's really um, great if you can uh, work with your circle of friends and with your um, kind of workplace and colleagues to try and reduce the fear. And you can see that a lot in different countries where there's different posters around trying to give clear information that's trying to reduce the fear that populations mm -hmm. are feeling as well. So governments are taking steps to try and help reduce this fear because they know it can spread and also private enterprises and NGOs as mm -hmm. well. They're trying to put a lot of information out to help with that. Very interesting. Yeah, so we can help each other also by being calm ourselves. Yes, yeah, and being... In the face of fear exactly. in others. Yeah. And being kind as well can be hmm. um, very helpful to help people get a, a grasp and that things are also okay in the here and now as well. Yeah, good. And, and then there's another thing that is really um, has come to the fore because recently uh, several countries have opened again. Schools aren't functioning normally. They, they did in some places, of course, but um, businesses are opening and shops are opening. Well, different countries are at different stages in this pandemic. But there's also the fear once you've been confined in your own home, I've found for a long time, people are really fearful of stepping out. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's natural or yeah, that's very natural, actually, Ia, yeah, because now when uh, when things reopen again, we're going into a new unknown environment. Um, so it's, again, fear will come up because we know that there are some things 
out there that we don't know about. What what are the new regulations? What what will happen in different places? And we're not going to know until we go into those situations ourselves. We're probably not going to know how afraid we feel um, or what might happen. I mean, I had the personal experience myself of coming into Copenhagen today, and the situation is quite different in this country as compared to my home country. And in the week leading up to it, I started to feel fear myself. Um, and, you know, I'm well versed in the techniques of managing fear and I had to catch myself and say, oh, what's what's this feeling? What's happening? Mm. And so then I took myself to the Danish website and tried to understand the rules in Copenhagen as best I could. And I felt really quite fearful until this morning when I took the flight. And then I started to calm down and feel that I'd made the right preparations Yes. And then things actually turned out to be a lot more relaxed than I thought they were. So oh, it's, interesting. Yeah. sometimes it's good to prepare yeah. yourself for these situations, um, even though you don't know what they might be. And you're also pointing out that even if you know a lot and you have a lot of self-insight and you you know all the techniques, you can still have the feeling. Absolutely. And then you know how to address it. That's good. So, yeah. so let's move on to feelings of guilt, because guilt is another feeling. So... Um, what is um, what 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 can what can some say guilt is a natural feeling? You explained that before, but if somebody is very guilty, feels guilty all the time, how can you how can you help address that guilt? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just step back a little bit and explain guilt for our listeners. So guilt is when you're feeling bad about some actions that you've taken, okay? So or actions that you haven't taken. So with COVID, maybe you um, decided to. Um, go out in a big social gathering with your friends because you really wanted to celebrate a birthday. And then afterwards, um, you felt guilty about the actions that you had taken. So this is the feeling of guilt. And it is a positive feeling because it helps us learn. And it's actually the first step towards um, making positive actions to feel fear and guilt. Because once we become self-aware of some actions that are maybe not the best choices that we could have made. This helps us make better choices in the future. Now, that's very interesting. So actually, we should be acknowledged that we have that we um, feel guilty, we should um, sort of say thank you to the to the guilt and then learn and, and think about what to do different the next time. And then of course, not do what was wrong again. That's what you're saying, basically. Yeah, so we can just learn a lot from guilt. And I think maybe most people have experienced guilt from COVID because when the when the virus first came about, we didn't actually know what the right things were to do. And we all made, or many of us made errors, if you like, or did things that we perhaps might not do now. And so probably most people have some feelings of guilt about actions that they took with hindsight that they wouldn't. And this can remind us again, as some countries go through, uh, might have a second wave or reinfections, it helps to remind us to follow those rules more strictly if we reflect on Mm -hmm. those early feelings of guilt that we had. So um, there's also shame, and shame is different from guilt. But could you actually feel shameful if you have a guilt, sense of guilt of something you did, you didn't follow the rules, and then you don't, you do it again? Could that eventually lead to you feeling shame, which is a different kind of emotion? It could. And yeah, even if you did all the things right, you can still feel shame because shame is actually a feeling that you have about yourself, that you as a person are bad or wrong. Um, So shame is a very deep feeling Um, and what we know about guilt is that guilt, um, a lot of research has been done that shows that guilt helps us take pro-social behaviours. So it helps us learn and do the right thing in the future. Whereas with shame, people feel so bad internally about themselves that the research has shown that they tend to withdraw or not take pro-social behaviours to continue to engage in the behaviour that's perhaps not best. So shame is a very um, deep feeling and it's not particularly helpful for COVID. Mm, Because shame is also characterised by you, as you say, it's a deep feeling, you want to hide yourself, you don't want to share it. So... Have you had? Um, have you helped anybody share just small stories of things they've done that made them feel shameful, or that that then helped them? 
Yeah, so one of the techniques that um, I tend to use with people who have a deep sense of shame is um, to help them share perhaps the thing they're least shameful about. And this can help them open the door a little bit. Also with clients who feel really deep shame, I help them to try and shift that feeling of shame, so um, that feeling that there's something wrong with themselves, to focus more outwardly on their behaviours instead. To, to, so to shift shame to guilt. Because once we have guilt, we can learn and make actions to correct the behaviour. Very, very interesting. Very good points. Um, we've come to the end of the conversation. So I just want to know, is there anything else you'd like to add that you haven't mentioned f from your experience with working with people who have feelings of fear, guilt during the COVID-19? I think probably just the final thing I'd like to say is that nobody's perfect. <laughs> um, and, no, you know, it's just not possible to be perfect. It's very natural to feel fear and guilt. It's very natural to um, do things that may not be the best judgment at the, in retrospectively. But we just try and learn and we show we need to sh show self-compassion to ourselves. And, re and from there, we can start to move forward and take behaviours that are more helpful for us during these times. Right. That has been really very thought, that's been very thought provoking and, and interesting. Um, I was, I was, I just felt like also wanting to share that one thing that really helped me during the first couple of days when we were in lockdown was actually to think about or to reflect about what I was uh, grateful for during the days where mm. I thought, well, actually, this is quite fine and, and, and there's no need to moan or be unhappy because there are other aspects that made me happy about what was happening, not about the COVID as such, but but in general. Yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah, it's, it's possible. And usually we do hold two different types of feelings at the same time. So we can feel very fearful about COVID or have feelings of guilt or shame. And also, as you said, be grateful for what we do have. And it's fine to hold these two things within us at the same time. So Mel, this has been very interesting. Thank you very much for enlightening our listeners to this podcast. Thank you so much for the invitation, Ian. Thank you.